Hello everyone. Uh, today we discuss ABGA score, something that we use every day in our labor ward and something that we should all know uh, something about. Um, we'll discuss what is ABGA score, um, what it is used for, what it is not used for, its limitations, and uh, we'll also discuss um, some scenarios that I will leave for you, uh, for you to try and calculate ABGA score because this is one question that is always there in the OSCE station to get an ABGA score for, uh, for this particular baby. Uh, so APGA score is um, a method we use to report the status of the newborn immediately after birth. Uh, we can also uh, use it to to as, to assess uh, the response of the baby to resuscitation if resuscitation is needed at all. So we also have this terminology acrocyanosis, which is um, peripheral. Uh, blueness that is usually there in babies in this case um, where this, their central uh, regions are, are colored pink but their peripheries are, are blue or purple yeah then asphyxia is um, really impairment of gas exchange which if prolonged leads to hypoxemia um, increased carbon dioxide concentration in the body which leads to acidosis and eventually death that's what um, asphyxia is so Abga was um, an anesthesiologist um, who came up with this um, Abga score in uh, 1952. So we use our name to remember the parameters. So there are five parameters and each of them is uh, scored from zero to two. So since there are five, the maximum each uh, baby can get at birth is 10. And... Um, yeah, so you just have to go through all of them. I normally use my own, which I have um, on the right side. And it's um, it helps me remember how to grade the, uh, the parameters. So we can go through it. So you first look at the color of the baby. So if it's blue everywhere, uh, that's a zero. If it's blue in some places and... Um, pink in others you give um, a one and if the baby is pink everywhere you give um, you give a two so then you go to heart rate on heart rate all you have to remember is hundred 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 if um, the heart rate is above hundred hundred and above that's a two if it's below hundred that's a one if there's no heartbeat at all, you give a zero. And then we come to arousability uh, or uh, reflex irritability or what is called grimace in the APGA acronym. So this is really the response of the baby to stimulation. So if you um, stimulate the baby and it's not responding at all, um, you give a zero. If you stimulate, you get uh, some slight response, uh, you give a one. If you stimulate the baby and you get a maximum response, uh, usually maybe a baby crying, um, you give a two for that. You've seen how the um, midwives try to arouse uh, the babies in labor ward. Some of them even do the wrong thing of putting the baby upside down, beating the baby on the back, pinching the baby, and so on. It's really somebody trying to arouse the baby to stimulate the baby though that's a wrong way of arousing the baby you can rub gently at the back you can gently rub the soles of the feet of the baby and so on to try and arouse it so that's arousability then respiration if the baby is breathing normally uh, or the baby has cried that's a two if the respirations are not good enough you are not happy with the respirations then you give a one the baby is not breathing at all you give a zero then on muscle tone if the baby is completely flexed uh, like uh, in fetal position the arms are flexed the lower limbs are flexed you give a two if uh, it's somewhere in between like you're not happy with the amount of um, uh, tone that the baby has muscle tone you give a one and if there's no muscle tone at all the baby's flat it's like in frog position that's 
as zero. So you can see that there's a lot of subjectivity in the way that um, the APGA score is done um, because someone can say arousable on this one and so on where somebody can say not arousable and so on. So there's a lot of subjectivity in the, in the measurement. So if the APGA score is above five, then we call it reassuring. If it's between uh, four and uh, six, we say it's slightly abnormal. If it's less than three, it's really low, and that baby might need a lot of resuscitation. A baby between four and six needs some resuscitation, and the one above seven usually just needs um, uh, routine care. Uh, so when do you do the APGA score? So you can do it at one minute. Um, that's when uh, when that golden minute has passed. The baby has been born. You try and resuscitate that baby. You dry it. You um, uh, you warm it. Uh, you dress it up and so on. That's what you're doing in one minute. Then at one minute, then you can uh, do your APGA score. Um, then at five minutes, really you are trying to check um, how the baby uh, was doing um, extra uterine. At one minute, you're trying to measure how the baby was faring uh, during the labor. So labor is a stressful period. If um, the baby is struggling at one minute, then you can think that those um, didn't... Um, uh, take uh, the labor or the labor had so much stress on that baby then at five minutes like we've said you are trying to um, say how is the baby doing outside because now the placenta is off the warmth of the mother is off the baby is now trying to survive by itself it's not surviving from supply from the mother so you are saying how is the baby doing outside the um, uh, the uterus so if the baby has an APGA score uh, less than seven at five minutes then that baby for that baby you need to do uh continue doing up gas scores every five minutes for about 20 minutes uh, in fact even every baby that has needed some resuscitation you need to do up gas scores every five minutes for about um uh, 20 minutes so what is the APGA score used for? So we've already said it's used to determine how the baby was faring during labor. That's a one minute APGA score. How the baby is uh, faring in extra uterine life. That's the APGA score at uh, five minutes. APGA score can also be used to determine how the baby is responding to resuscitation, especially that APGA score between one and five minutes. Then um, you can use it as a communication tool uh, to the mother to tell them how the baby is doing. I've seen midwives explain to the mother that you see your baby hasn't cried, trying to explain in a um, uh, crude way uh, the APGA score. So if the mothers could understand, it's even better to say, you see the APGA score was two, now it's six, or it's five, now it's eight, and so on. So we can use it as a communication to, um, to, the, um, to the mother and also to uh, colleagues then um, sometimes the APGA score is used to um, decide if we are to continue with uh, resuscitation some people use it if you have been resuscitating a baby and um, that um, baby still has an APGA score of zero at 10 minutes most of those babies don't do so well and some people say the resuscitation should stop at that point so what is the APGA score not used for? What should it not be used for? So it should not be used to determine which baby needs resuscitation um, because your calculation of uh, the APGA score will steal a lot of time uh, from you and you are stealing that golden minute that you need to resuscitate the baby. So when the baby is born, just get on with it, uh, dry the baby, uh, stimulate the baby, uh, dress up the baby, um, and so on. Don't start calculating because you are losing time. Uh, so I think that's why there's no APGA score done at birth. APGA score starts at one minute, then at five minutes. And then um, you cannot use the APGA score to decide what type of resuscitation to give the baby. It's not enough. So you can't say this baby's APGA score is two, so it will need fluid. Uh, this baby's APGA score is uh, five, so it will need um, 
more oxygen than the baby with abgasco for so we don't use abgasco for that purpose so you use your clinical acumen to decide um what the baby needs and so on then um it cannot be used all by itself uh to to diagnose asphyxia we defined asphyxia as um uh a reduction in the supply of oxygen uh, to the lungs, which leads to hypoxia, which leads to hypocarbia, hypercarbia, which is a lot of uh, carbon dioxide uh, in the blood, and leads to acidosis and sometimes death of the baby. So you cannot decide um, that the baby is asphyxiated just by by looking at the tone. Uh, uh, the abgasco alone is not enough uh, for you to make that uh, that diagnosis. Of course, there are some indicators that are indicating perfusion, like um, cyanosis and so on. But it by itself is not enough. Then um, you cannot use it to predict um, future morbidity and mortality of the baby. So you can't say this abgasco is three, so the baby won't do well in the future, they won't pass grade 7. You cannot use the APGA score uh, to determine future morbidity and mortality of the individual baby. At population level, we can say most babies that have a low APGA score below 7 don't do well. Most babies that have APGA score below 3 don't really do well, a lot of them, but we cannot use that on a uh, particular baby. That is what is called uh, an ecological fallacy. You can't use a population study to determine what happens on an individual. So you can't say most babies that have APGA score of 3 don't make it, so I won't resuscitate. Because some babies with low APGA score are well and doing very well out there. And the other reason you can't use... Um, APGA score for that is because uh, many times it's lagging behind the biochemical markers. So a baby might have a high creatinine because their kidneys are already damaged, but the baby looks like the APGA score has improved when the damage has already been done. So we need to see that what's happening inside the baby, their biochemical markers might be different from the number that we are calculating, uh, putting in consideration the um, um, how subjective the APGA score is done. Some uh, practitioners just uh, hear the baby cry and they say APGA score 10. They don't even go through uh, the specific parameters. Then I think that was talking to the limitations of APGA score that when we have low birth weight babies, usually the APGA score is physiologically low uh, because they are small. Then uh, preterm babies have low APGA score because their lungs are not mature, their um, muscles are not mature, so they are hypotonic. If a mother was on pethidine, the APGA score will be the APGA score of the baby will be low, and um, APGA scores in two babies that are the same might be different. A good example is um, if you resuscitate a baby who had APGA score of two. And then after five minutes, the APGA score is nine. That APGA score is really different from a baby that didn't need resuscitation and the APGA score of, of nine. So we need to be aware of those limitations of APGA score that nine is not the same from one baby to the next. And of course, APGA score is also um, affected by the neurological maturity of the baby, uh, by their cardiovascular uh, status. At birth, so all those things also affect uh, the APGA score. So we can't. That's why we can't say asphyxia just based on APGA score because sometimes it's it's other parameters like neurological maturity of the baby that are affecting the low uh, APGA score. So finally, these are the questions I've put up. Four questions uh, for you guys to try and look at the APGA score and try and calculate. Uh, you, you remember that we are using um, the color of the baby. Uh, we are using the, um, the heart rate. We are using the arousability of the baby. We are using the respirations and we are using the M, which is the muscle tone to try and get um, uh, an APGA score for these babies. So um, thank you so much for listening and we will see you in the next video.